Can I tell you, I thank God I got a church to preach that I can preach to. Amen. There's a lot of preachers don't they just say you can't preach to people who that's not one the Baptist church. Amen. I said, you call it out right. I mean just man preach it like it's supposed to be preached. Amen. They'll look at you and say, Come on, bring it on. Amen. Amen. Like that time we was down there in the, uh what's that little town? I can't remember the name of it right now. Down outside of Mount Vernon. We was down in that and we I mean I was preaching. And man, I mean, I was absolutely wound up. My my veins were popped. I was preaching about the horse, man. And that God's my witness, an old lady took her hearing aids out. <laughs> set them on the table and went. Uh -uh. Hey, hey. Like, you ain't scared me, big boy. Come on. I've, I've seen bigger. And 60 years ago, you might have seen bigger. You know what I mean? Amen. Amen. Everybody preached like this. You just said, come on, youngster. I, I want to see if you can pop a blood vessel. Amen. You do, then I'll be impressed. Amen. 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 But I tell them I get to preach like that for this church, and I'm thankful for a church to preach to. Amen. Amen. First, if you get called to preach, you want to preach. Amen. If you call to preach, you have a desire to preach. And, and listen, I started out preaching the toilet bowls and, and mop full. Amen. I was told to sit and wait. That's who I preached it. I preached it to my wife at home. She'd say, save it for somewhere else. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I preach, I preach on street corners and tree stumps. Amen. And, Amen. I mean, but if you called. I never wondered about how big the building was going to be. I mean, man, I just wanted to find a place to get up and just start shouting about the gospel. Amen. 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 And if you're called, God will give you a place to preach. Amen. 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 Is everybody, everybody there? I've seen the pages turning. I should have bought you enough time. First Peter chapter 1. When you find verse 22, would you stand with me? Amen. Now, listen, I know people leave them. And if you don't know me, most people will think that make me preach less. <laughs> But now, I'm taking my watch off and I'm going to put the gospel on my heart. Amen. Amen. And we'll leave when the when the hammer's done. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because I ain't no hurry. Preach on. When they're asleep, I might stop and get me one of them little hats. You can put the coffee cups in the hat and just drink it. Right <laughs> Amen. I, I like it when you go drive at night time. Amen. Some, they, they said, Brother Harvest, why do you drive at night? I said, because that's when they're asleep. Amen. 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 You get along with the Lord, and your wife don't look over and go, slow down. Amen. Or speed up. Amen. I get both of them sometimes. Amen. But, but that does what I'm trying to tell you is we're going to have church for whatever we're about leaving. Amen. Amen. First Peter chapter 1. Let's do this. Let's give everything that we have to the Lord tonight. Amen. Verse 22, the Bible says, seeing... Ye have purified your souls. I want you to underline them three words right there. That's going to be what we're going to be talking about. See, and ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto an unfeigned love of the brethren. See, ye that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, Amen. not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of the grass, and the grass wherewith and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached 
unto you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just ask you, God, to use me tonight, Lord. And God, that, Lord, I not rush the message. And God, I not preach outside of what you want me to preach. God, that I would not say one thing, Lord, that you would have me not to say. But God, everything that I say, bring praise, honor, and glory to you. And God, Lord, that you be magnified. Lord, high lifted up. God, Lord Jesus, all that we live, and God, is for you, Lord. And Lord, all that we have is yours. And tonight, God, would you take this, Lord, and bless this now? Lord, we love you. God, we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. And amen. amen, you may be seated. I want to show you in light of what he's been talking about. He's been talking about the precious blood amen. of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How he, by us believing in him, we were saved by our faith that we have hope in God. Now, I want you to understand, I was talking to my family the other day. These are marvelous words that have came into the later part of Brother Peter's life because there was a time when Brother Peter thought that they had to live and act as the Jews, uh, that they had to be circumcised to be yeah. saved. They had to keep the law to be saved. And he thought that the access of salvation had not been made under the Gentiles. Then one day God shows up. And he brings down a blanket from heaven that had uh, all kinds of unclean beasts and four footed. Y'all know the story. And he sets it over there uh, in front of Peter and he tells Peter, he says, Peter, I want you to rise, kill, and eat. Yeah. And Brother Peter said, No, far be it from me, Lord. I've never touched nor eaten anything that's unclean. Yeah. And the Lord uh, rebukes him and says, Do not call common. What I have cleansed. Amen. And then this lesson that he was given to Brother Peter was so that when Peter walked down to Cornelius' house uh, a little bit later on, about a chapter later, that he would see the Gentiles get born again Amen. from the God of the Jews. I want you to understand the same Jesus of the New Testament, Amen. the same God, the Father of the New Testament, the same Holy Ghost uh, God of the New Testament, they are the same uh, God of the Amen. Old Testament. Amen. Amen. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a non-changing God. And we do not have a new God of the New Testament. We have the same God as always has been, has been from everlasting to everlasting, and will always be after long our lives will lived and passed on. Amen. And understand this is very amazing to me because when Peter is talking right here, this is after the Jerusalem Council. Uh, you'll find over in Galatians, Paul, uh, I believe in chapter 1 or in, what, 1 into 2, and Paul is uh, giving his lesson uh, to the church of Galatia and he says how he had to withstand uh, Peter to his face. Yep. Rebuking Peter. Amen. And then later on at the Jerusalem Council, Peter takes his acknowledgement of what the Lord did at Cornelius' house and said, okay, we're going to be saved the same way they're going to be saved. Amen. And that's by faith through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you understand this was really big because he starts using terminology that had not been used since John chapter 3 Amen. when dealing with Nicodemus and did not really come back into the light until Brother Paul uh, talks about being a new creature in Christ. Uh, that these terminologies had not been used uh, and they, until Paul was given the mystery of the gospel, which later on, if you read the latter of Peter's writings, he gives an acknowledgement. Let's just go look at that together. Amen. Amen. One second here. I want you to look down there. In the last uh, chapter, Second Peter chapter 3. And I want you to look at verse 15. And there'll be a little teaching with the preacher tonight. Amen. And the Bible says an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Amen. Even as our, as a, as spur, as Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. Look down in verse 15. I got some people looking around still. So I want you to be there because I want you to see this with your own eyes. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him that was written unto you. And now that's amazing. Peter's given the acknowledgement that Paul 
was given wisdom that was not given to the original apostles. Amen. In verse 16, as also in his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned, unstable rest, so that they do also other scriptures unto their own destruction. Now this is amazing because Peter is already acknowledging the epistles of Paul as the ordained word of God. Amen. Amen. He is already by the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I mean, man, you see what we're building up here. Peter's been given some enlightenment. Amen. Look at him. I know he's a goof up on the boat. Amen. I know he's a denier in the court area. I know he's been a mess. But listen, he's also the man that preached on the day of the Amen. He's also the man that saw them get saved. He's the man that saw Paul come on the scene. He's the man that took the rebuking of Paul. And here now, he's given the acknowledgement of the very epistles of Paul as already inspired by the Holy Ghost of God and ordained as the Word of God. Amen. And when you see a man addressing something that, that so many go over to Acts 2.38 and get messed up on. That's right. Acts 2.38 says we have be baptized for the remission of your sins. Why does Acts 2.38 say that? I'll tell you why. They didn't know anything else. That's why he said Peter, that's why Peter said that Paul was given a wisdom because until the gospel got given, amen, to Paul, to Paul for a clear understanding of what the gospel is, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Turn your Bibles over there. I want to show you all this. First Corinthians chapter 15. And I want you to look down in verse 1. If you ain't got a Bible, tell me and I'll give you a Bible. Because if you ain't got a Bible, I'll tell you any lie I want to tell you. That's right. Now you listen to me now. Amen. Dave Drucker comes in here on Wednesday. You better have your Bible open and ready to receive the Word of God, and you better check everything said by the Bible. Amen? That's right. Not that I'm doubting David Drucker, but I'm telling you everything that you have, you better check it by that Bible you hold in your hand. That's Amen. right. 1 Corinthians 10, 15, verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also you are saved, if you keep remembering what I preach unto you, unless... You have believed in vain. Christ delivered unto you first of all that which also to see how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The very definition of the gospel being laid out here is the, bed, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Now I want you to see this. How amazing this is. Is go back up there into verse 22. And that's where I want to preach on the purifying of your soul. Purified soul. In verse 22, the Bible says, Seeing ye have, that is past tense. I'm sorry, First Peter chapter 1. Go back over in our text. I'm sorry. And I'm on, I, you know me. I, I got a ham I'm trying to get to. And I got to get to the, the gravy uh, late before we get there again. But First Peter chapter 1. In verse 22, when you there, say amen. 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 He says, And seeing you have purified your soul and obeying the truth of the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart perfectly. So the first thing we find is the purifying of your soul in the past tense is when dealing directly with salvation. In fact, the very next verse talks about being born again. Amen. I don't have time to go into the incorruptible sea, but you have to understand that over Galatians is very plain. It was talking about one seed, not a multiple seed. What Abraham was promised that his seed would be the multitude. Amen. And what it was talking about is all those that would come to become children of God through the blood of Jesus Christ, which washed away our sin. Amen. And you understand that that is the first time 
that your soul became purified. It had all, I, I mean, man, it's hard to wrap your mind around this, but something that's purified has all outward contaminations removed completely. Amen. See, what you were, dear friend, and what some of you may still be tonight, is contaminated by the sin nature of this world. In fact, our Lord did not have a sin nature because He was born in a virgin's womb. There was not a seed of man. There was no seed of the nature of sin that came unto Him. But but you and I were born into sin. We were conceived in sin. And understand this tonight, that if you have been saved, you were once contaminated and then made pure. But if you're not saved tonight, the very thing that will drive your soul to hell is you have not been through the purification process of imputed sin that is attached to your soul. Amen. That's right. Man is made up of three parts. Soul, spirit, and body. Amen. What happens to your soul is what will drag where your spirit is. What spirit you have is what will affect your soul. You understand, for those that have not the, the Holy Ghost of God, they have not the Spirit of God, they are still living in the contamination right now. If you're lost in here, and I don't know how many lost people with God, but if you're lost in here right now, you are contaminated with a sin nature, and that sin nature hooks to you like weights. And when you die in your natural man, and you pass away in the natural man, what happens is all the filth of this sin, all the weights of sin, the Bible calls them, uh, the weights, by the way, are very clearly there. That's why we've got yokes of bondage. And when, when you and I die, if we are still in our sin when we die, those weights will drag you all the way to a devil's hell. Amen. And when you get down there, the purification process is still an end process, but it's an eternal damnation. So you never reach a place of purification. You are in a damnable state for all eternity. Why? Because you chose to reject the very gospel that Paul brought to you by the precious blood of God. Because you and I are just like Nicodemus in John chapter 3. We must be born again. And if you're not born again tonight, dear friend, you need to be born again. You need to find out that He's real. You need to find out that salvation is real. You say, Brother Hargis, how can I be saved? I'll tell you by purification that all your nasty sin, when the blood of Christ covers your sin, it cleanses your sin, it wipes away your sin, it's forgiven as far as the east is, from the west to be remembered no more and your name is written in the book of life and there your name shall ever be. Amen. Amen. And for you and I that were, are saved tonight, I want you to wrap your mind around this, child of God. All that nastiness, all that darkness, all of the weights of your past, Amen. When he was hanging, Amen. suspended between heaven and hell, Amen. Amen. he took all our sin yeah. Amen. upon him. Amen. Now I want you to really listen to this. Don't just start blocking me out because it's a little hard to bear. Come on, but in my salvation process, I have accept what he done for me. And Miss Casey, what he did for me is he caused such a separation between him and the Heavenly Father because the Heavenly Father cannot look on sin Amen. that he became sin for on him who knew no sin. And he became, we became the righteousness of God through the righteousness Amen. of God. Amen. And as it rested on his shoulder, yep. Miss Judy, with all of the sin of the world, and rested on his shoulder when he had taken on all the sin could handle yep. and all that man could never handle. And as it rested on him, I want you to understand that so much sin showed up in such one place that the whole world became dark. Amen. And you say, what was it? That was a cleansing process. Amen. Started. Amen. That was the provision of a purification that would be like trying by fire. Amen. And when you got saved, 
He took all of your sin that day and washed you white as snow and had no spot and had no blemish. You were no longer a drug addict. You were no longer an adulterer. You were no longer a fornicator. You were no longer a liar and no longer a thief and no longer anything else. Now you are no longer a sinner full of sin. And what an amazing purification that it came down into your soul. John said, I baptize you with water, but there's one coming after me, and he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost Amen. and with fire. And when you got that Holy Ghost fiery baptism, yeah, that fire buddy. that engulfed your soul, it purified you at the day of Amen. But it ain't long after this that we go a living in this old wicked world. Amen. And we go living in this old wicked world. Amen. And we go around and we start to find some things that, that you and I was never uh, uh, supposed to put on to us. We were uh, never supposed to have on to us. And, and you and I go about it and we do it the things that, that we should never do. And, and as he's dealing with this purification, there was a warning that he saw that he was scared of those that have been given the liberty and given the opportunity to live in the righteousness of Christ. And as time goes along, Amen. Amen. We start walking around wanting to pick up filth ourselves. Amen. Uh -huh. Am I all alone in this? No. Come on. Did y'all go through? Y'all sin was tonight. I, I oh, know, hey. brother, there's been some heartaches since I've been saved Thank because you. of sin that I picked up. And I don't condone sin. I don't excuse sin. Amen. But I can tell you, at the very core of my nature, Amen. it's a sin nature. Amen. I don't want to live in sin. I'll be separated from that. I want to be closer to God. But we're going to get honest if we're going to do that. Amen. Amen. And along the way, we get into sin and sin gets on us. And all of a sudden, we go by talking about purification and washing and cleansing. And then I want you to look over. You're still in second, uh, uh, first Peter. Go to Second Peter chapter 2. Go right over to verse 19. Some of you already know where I'm going, and you don't even want to go there. Because after the whitewashing of that precious blood, Amen. after the cleansing of the soul, Amen. man goes a pressing on. And instead of living in the purification and living in the cleanliness, Amen. you find out real quick, you're saved about five minutes when you find out that this soul really does the word for this flesh and this flesh wars with the spiritual man and you find out they really are contrary one to another and you really find out that that which you wouldn't do you find yourself doing it that you wish you didn't do you find yourself not doing it and you find out there's a real war in it. I'm going to tell you a lot of Christians are walking around dirty because they won't get honest about their sin Amen. they're walking around broken and they're walking around hurt and wounded and pulled down by the very bondage that he set us free from when he purified our soul. Amen. Because we won't get honest about sin. Yeah. We won't get honest about our lifestyles. We won't get honest about the things that we're doing. And right here in 2 Peter 2.20, verse 19. No, 18 is good. Start right 18. Hurry up, we'll be in verse 1. It says, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh through much wantonness those that were clean escape from them who live in there. By the way, can I tell you, some of y'all better wake up to this. You know that the, the Lord that saved you and cleansed you, do you know the same way that He loves you? Do you know there's another side of this that Amen. wants to destroy you after you get saved? Amen. Wanted you before you got saved. Right. If you're lost in here right now, you listen to me. If you're lost in here, you got a good high probability of Amen. getting killed when you leave here because you've heard enough gospel to get saved. If you think the devil's going to let you get saved, you're, well, you lost it tonight. Amen. If you've heard enough gospel to get saved, you got a good chance they will just take you out. That way you don't get saved and open your eyes in hell. And when you get down to hell, the only thing you'll be able to say down there is, I sure wish I 
child of God saved. Amen. But there's so many that once we're washed, we go around and we pick up things and things happen. Amen. And you know when people get saved and they think they can walk on water. Amen. And then when they find out that they sink like everything else, yeah. they get knocked off course. And then they have words like this. Well, I've already messed up. Might as well quit. Right. Yeah. That's the difference between being backslidden and being in the fight. Amen. Can somebody help me out right there? Amen. That's the difference between being backslidden and being in the fight. When you give in to the temptation, you give in to the sin and go ahead and let it ruin your life. That's when you get real far back sitting on God if you're saved anyway. Amen. I may look at it. I ain't going to tell nobody that they ever backslidden. I ain't going to dare gamble with your soul. But if you ever have been saved uh, and you get off into sin, Amen. God will torment you and walk you into your Amen. sin. Amen. Amen. But too many don't realize there's a whole other force out here trying to get you to live in there. Amen. There's bad doctrine everywhere. Amen. Bad doctrine everywhere. You know, every one of y'all got put in this church for a reason. Amen. And you know there's always going to be something trying to drag you out of this church. Amen. There's going to be a reason to not be Praise in church. God. A reason to find another church. Well, if we find us a nicer preacher, we wouldn't have to feel like we felt like this morning. Yeah, you'd be out <laughs> drunk and on dope and shooting up and they're That's sleeping right. around and watching porn and everything oh, else. Right. Hey, you need somebody to rear about yeah. it. It won't be worth the word every now and then. Yeah. Tell yeah. them keeps you walking right there. Right. You get a child that ain't got a daddy that whips them, I'll show you a hillion. Amen. Amen. You know, I don't care if it's a preacher's kid. You don't want that kid, I'll show you a hillion. I'll show you somebody right. living like hell. Amen. They always give them preacher's kids a bad rap. You know why? Because a bunch of them limp wristed, no call, self I mean, sissy, find no Amen. good men. Amen. And they ain't called to begin Amen. with. And they let their wife run the house and let yeah. their children be the back of That's right. Amen. Amen. They need to whoop them. Yeah, they need to take the stand. Amen. I had one other day told me some man. I said, I hate when my little one goes out there on them dates. What about you? I said, mine don't date. Amen. <laughs> oh, you can't shelter them. Yeah, but I ain't got to give them over to sin either. That's Amen. right. Amen. That's right. Can't shelter them. You can't, can't let them live in a beset. Everybody who's got somebody knocked up. Amen. Amen. They don't like me till their kid gets knocked. Then they want to come talk Amen. to me. Amen. Amen right there, dear Amen. friend. I said every compromiser has got sin did it. I mean bad it in real bad places in their life. Amen. 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 Oh, preachers too much. I think you ain't enough. Amen. Amen. Can I get some help right here? Y'all got to help me. Everybody else look like a Mack truck hit them. Amen. 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 I'm talking about, hey, I think you ain't enough. Amen. Amen. Now, he takes it too serious. Well, Jesus did not want to jot nor tittle. And yeah. in one period, in one comma, ain't going to ever be lost. Yeah, now, and his word is forever settled 1989 yeah, of Psalms. Yeah. I, I guess yeah. I'm just going to take it all seriously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to preach it all. Amen. Amen. Now look here in verse 19. Here's what they call old, old Duggar girls. Come on. Daisy Dukers. Amen. By the way, I tell my... Hey, look, I'm going to say something to every one of y'all in here. Y'all look at me. Ladies, you know why I tell you to cover yourself up? Because I don't want you to look like a street corner leaving the Amen. church. That's right. If you have to pull up all the time... Amen. Get you a shirt that fits. Right. They Amen. sell them at the good one. Somebody help me right there. No, nobody wants to see your stuff. And nobody Amen. wants to see the back side of your stuff. Nobody Amen. wants to see the front side of your stuff. Right. Hey, I preach the way I do because this is a holy place. It ain't a place yeah. for prostitution. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. There's churches that like, you know it's adultery. Yep. Amen. And you women wear anything, suppose anything men look at, and they get and they get aroused, they man got you looking at you in a sexual orientation, both use adultery. Right. Right. And if you're the right. dude, you're a pervert. Somebody Amen. say Amen. Amen. Help me right. Somebody Amen. help me. Amen. Amen. Help me. I'm talking about. Hey, hey, look at me, them Duggar girls done been lied to. Amen. Yep. Yep. Wine bibbing. Amen. Street walking. Yep. Amen. Wearing daisy dukes. Amen. 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 You can disagree with me if you want. You can be wrong all along. You want to be wrong. Amen. 
You worry. Hey, look, amen. You can't argue no Bible with me, though. Amen. Brother Kendrick said the best. What do you believe? Amen. You either believe the Word of God or you don't. I wouldn't, right. I wouldn't, bless God, I wouldn't go to a church like this if I didn't believe the Bible. That's I think right. what I'd do. I, I'd pack up my stuff. I'd head down to, to let me live like hell back in this church. You That's can pick right. my all over Laurel County. That's amen. Right. Hey man, That's hey man. Right. go down there and, and look at me. They'll put five, six in a room. He ain't never going to preach to nobody. Cause he hey man. man, and he'll tell you what you want to hear. You won't have to listen to all that correction. You won't have to listen to that and prove and that rebuke. It. You can go down there to Lily Liver Sissy Baptist Church all hey you man. want. Honey, they'll tickle your ears down there. Amen. Amen. But hey, they're going to go right to hell with the rest of them so they don't care what That's they right. say. Somebody help me. Amen. Amen. But hey, I got to stand for that judgment seat. That's right. I got to stand for that judgment seat. Amen. Amen. And I'm just going to preach like I'm going to be judged by what I say. Amen. Watch this verse 9 in 2 Peter 2. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, the same is brought into bondage. For if after they escape the pollutions of the world for the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Amen. I proved that this morning yeah. with Samson, yeah. yep. Amen. Saul, and Solomon. Yeah. Yep. Amen. You say, well, I ain't going to hell. God may leave you, let you live here in a status. Almost Amen. like that. Amen. God, God may put you in a place that death would be better than the Amen. outcome you're in. Amen. 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 As the Bible says that, hey, it's better to have never known it. Yeah. Amen. I can't wrap my mind around it. How would it be better to head on into hell? Amen. I won't get a clear answer on that until I get to heaven. Amen. Amen. Brother Ken Bowden, I will not get a clear answer on that. I can hear everybody's philosophy. I got one of my own, but it'll take the Holy Ghost of God when we get to heaven to bring that to our enlightenment. Because I'll tell you right now, dear friend, he might be talking about those that put on air as Christians and fake their Christianity, all that Lord, Lord talk, and at the end of the day, you know you ain't no more saved than a lost cross. How can you get saved at five? Amen. These, these duggers got me mad. Amen. Got saved at five, live your whole life on dope. Preach on. Running around being a, a, a prostitute in the world. Amen. Been with 40, 11 different people. Amen. Got saved at five. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ain't never had a lick of Christianity in Amen. your life. Ain't never looked like a Christian. Ain't never sound like a hey. Christian. Ain't a whole. Oh, well, 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 what happened was, is that, uh, is that, is that, is that, what, what, what you didn't get the Holy Ghost? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Get awful quiet in here. Amen. Amen. Like this morning, get awful quiet in here. Don't be shouting, church. Amen. But ain't been much shouting going on to this day. Amen. 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 But all I'm saying since I was born, I have been 4 11. Got big for four and eleven people. I've been there been doping. Amen. I've never been there drinking. I ain't never had a life for me. I've been saying since I was four and a half. Come on. Can somebody help me? Come on. Is, is, he is he preaching all right now? Is he preaching all right now? Hey! I'm talking about something wrong somewhere, dear friend. Yeah. I think it's might be talking about them uh, and that have faked it, amen, yeah. and have known it and rejected it, amen, and open their eyes in hell one day with the remembrance of what they've rejected. Amen. Won't really know for sure till we get to heaven, though. That's, right, amen. that's just my philosophy on it. Look down in verse 21. For it had been better for them not to know the way of righteousness and the known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. Of course, we know this is referenced in 2611. Amen. The dog is turned into his own vomit in the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Amen. Got brought out and all that purified. Mm -hmm. Got back into the world. Now you got dirty all over you again. Amen. Amen. Got that sin all over you again. Amen. Making bad decisions. And now all of a sudden you find out, oh man, Brother Mike, you're right. Once you get out there, Amen. you're just like the prodigal. 
As it brings you all the way down to a broken state. If you go back over and read about that prodigal, where you'll find him was broken right in the hall of the trough. It'll bring you down as low as it brings you. In fact, I believe with all my heart, he was in a place to die. Amen. Some of y'all been on the verge of a place to die. Amen. You may not die physically, but you're about to die spiritually. Amen. I believe with all my heart, there are some people in this room right now and listening to the way of that internet right now that you are just one more bad decision away from bringing pure destruction on your life and everybody around you. Amen. Because Amen. you're letting the cares... And the garbage that wants God don't play with sin. That's right. Amen. Amen. You think God did all that? Suffer like no man. I mean, we I preach that every time I say, suffer like no man suffered. He died like no man died. Like, Amen. Amen. You think God was done to see your sin and say, I did all that for you, and you think I'm just gonna let you mock me like that? Amen. Amen. I did all that for you, and you think I'm gonna let you just walk about and mock me like that? Amen. You think I cleanse you uh, and with my own blood? Uh, and with what blood of somebody else? That was his blood. Amen. And you think you look out and say, "Oh, I, I'm gonna let it be all right." Amen. Ain't gonna happen. Amen. But we won't take acknowledgement of our sin. Peter calls it out here. Some of y'all like a dog got all up in your vomit. Amen. That's, that's a picture. That's a picture of the sin of the tongue. Amen. That, that's what's come out of the heart. Amen. Yeah. Out of the abundance of the the, the, the mouth, or out of the of the heart, the mouth speaking. Yeah. What you say, friend, it is a, it's it's reflection in your heart. Amen. 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 Somebody say, well, maybe they have good intentions. <laughs> what are they saying? Amen. What what is their words? Your words in the Bible says either justifies your condemnation. Amen. Right. Amen. It either justifies your condemnation. You're like it one in Proverbs. He said, I have wipes away your mouth. Acts like she never consumed nothing. And you're just like old Samson over Amen. eating honey out of the body of a lion. Oh, mama didn't know about it. Oh, daddy didn't know about it. That new wife didn't know about it. I tell you what, though, uh, when nobody else knew about it, God knew about it. Amen. Amen. That's right. God knew about it. And God knows about you tonight. Amen. Amen. God knows about what you're doing. Amen. And God knows how you've been living. You said, well, Brother Hargis, and how in the world am I supposed to get up from a message like this? You need to get back to the cleansing table. Amen. Amen. You need to get back to the same place that purified you the first time. You say, well, how? Can I tell you that there are some simple biblical principles that are here? Amen. Amen. Simple biblical principles. But well, some of y'all ain't going to get right. Mm -hmm. If I took out my 38 special mm -hmm. and I could make you get right, I would. Amen. But honestly, some of y'all, if, 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 listen, I'm a Bible believer. Amen. Amen. And I really do believe that in a moment when choice has, has to be made, if you didn't pull a gun out and put it on some of them, they go ahead and just tell you, pull the trigger. Amen. Be easier. That's true. It'd be easier. Because mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it. I tell you, I mean, I'll tell you I'm going to do it. And I'll tell you I'm going to do it. And I'll tell you I'm going to do it. And they think by telling me that it's going to happen like it does something. They listen to me. I, I, I'm i all but grass too. One day I'm going to fade away and I'm going to go into the ground. Amen. And guess what? You won't have me to blame no more for Amen. your problem. Right. Amen. I need promise to get back from Texas. Come on. Right. That's right. Ain't that true? Amen. Amen. I ain't problems. No. Nope. Amen. But look at me. I ain't scared, honey. I'll be hammered down. Hey, I'll either make it to Texas or I'll be in glory. Somebody say amen. amen. And there ain't a scared bone in my body. But when I ain't look at me, or I, and no matter whether I go away or the grave or, or this week here, I'll be gone. You won't be able to blame me this week by what you do. Amen. 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 See, what's the rub? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You know what I'm preaching? I, you know it's so amazing to me. I have that kind of attitude thrown at me all the time. How rough I am on you. And can I tell you, I don't know who you are tonight. And you thinking I'm being so mean. And I'm a seven and kicking your shin. And Amen. I'm a hitting you in the back. And you know the problem is, I don't not know what one of you are into. Amen. Amen. I don't know what one of you. I don't know who's going to hell. Amen. Amen. That's right. 
I don't know who's going to heaven. Amen. I don't know what you do in your quiet time. And can I tell you, God help, I don't want to know what you do. I got enough. Yeah. <laughs> Some of y'all sit around and play video games. Amen. God help. <laughs> My son got that game in that room one day. This ain't no tree yet. One day, I go in there, Kim Holler's in there and goes, What are you, a gamer now? <laughs> and I'm like, what? I mean, I just got on it. She said, You've been in there two hours. <laughs> I said, Do what? She said, Look at your time. Yep. I got us. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, wash my hands. <laughs> Lost two hours of my life shooting at a fake deer on the TV. <laughs> Amen. Lord help. You ain't got nothing better to do. That's why I can't got no time to get in my Bible. Put that stupid game up. You got all the time in the world. Amen. You shoot, if you shoot a deer, for two hours, bless God, you read your Bible for four. Amen. Amen. Well, ain't nobody won't get off. Amen. Preach on video. I preach on anything, and it's all he's being to me. Can I tell you, neighbor? Maybe that's the Holy Ghost coming down, getting in your yeah. way. He wants you to get right that's on. Right. Yeah, Amen. And I want to give you some things to help you. First is the acknowledging of your sin. Amen. Amen. The acknowledging of your sin. I want you to go over to 1 John chapter 1. Because some of y'all feel like you're all alone in this. How many honestly, I mean, look, camera ain't going to get you nowhere. How many of y'all honestly feel like sometimes you're the only person that sins in here? How many people feel that way? Hands everywhere. Can, can I tell you all something? Listen to me. I'm going to help you with that tonight. Maybe I can help you purify your soul. Amen. Purified soul, a short account of God's best count be on. Amen. Best county. See, a bunch of you raise your hands and said, I feel like I'm the only one. I'm such a bad Christian. I don't do what the Lord said. I'm just going to go eat some worms and quit. <laughs> Over seven years of pastoring, I've seen some really good ones do it. Yeah. Seven years of pastoring, I've seen them sit right in the front rows and not be here within a year or two. Yeah. I've watched them get off track and they feel like, oh, oh, there ain't no hope. If you're saved, if you're saved tonight, you listen to me. You have the blessed hope. Amen. Amen. You have the blessed hope. Amen. Can I get a witness Amen. anywhere? Yeah. If you're saved, you got the blessed hope. Amen. Amen. You got all the hope. And when they look like there's no hope, you got the hope. Amen. Amen. And right here in First John chapter 1, let me see where I want to start at. Right six. Amen. We're in verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. That's right. Amen. So it's simple. I'm a good Christian person. Amen. But you know you're not. You're not. Amen. Don't care how much you say it. You know, there was a propaganda that uh, Hitler came up with. He said, if you say something enough times, people believe it's truth. Right. Humans buy into that. That's right. But God... Not one time. Amen. So when you look at God and say, I'm a good Christian. I'm a good Christian. I'm a good Christian. And you're a liar. You're a thief. You're a murderer. You're this. You're that. But no, but, 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 but I'm a good Christian. And I'm a good Christian. God is not going to all of a sudden go, you know what? That might be a good Christian out there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You pastor long That's enough. The truth. How many times we've had it? Yeah. Where people look at me and say, but I'm doing right, I'm doing right, I'm doing right, I'm doing right. And I'm like, I'm watching you do wrong, I'm watching you do wrong, I'm watching you do yeah. wrong. Amen. And if I know this that you're doing, how much more prominent is it that the Holy Ghost of God, Amen. which is supposed to be bearing witness with your soul, He knows what you're doing. Amen. 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 So He says here, He says, in verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Amen. Amen. Now, verse 8 is imperative. Amen. If you think you're in here tonight and you have no sin, yeah. you're in trouble. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Amen. And the truth is not in us. Amen. Amen. So whenever you have fallen into sin, 
Now, I'm be very careful what I'm going to say here. Because we ain't talking about, we're talking about a difference between things happening and you planning. Amen. 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 Bible very clearly distinguishes between ignorant sin yep. and willful sin. Amen. Amen. Friend, if you play, do I have, where's my phone? Go get my phone. Go get my phone. Got that cool bear on. I'm going to show her about the bear anyway. That's cool. Okay, so willful sin is me to get onto my phone, pick it up, and choose to go over to my safari. Well, I hit the wrong thing. And to get on my safari, tap this little thing, go www. and go to whatever site, sinsite.com. That's willful sin. Now, if you're in willful sin, then you have got something chemically wrong if you say you have no sin. But now, can I tell you good Christians have things happen like they're... I gave the, the, the picture the, about three weeks ago with my wife when that guy in the in the parking spot revved his engine like he run my wife over. I never planned on going out there and making a fool of myself, but I'll tell you, actually, if you're going to run my family over, I'm probably going to act like a fool. Amen. Amen. They still just enough of me in me. <laughs> All right. Amen. 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 I'm taking a side view mirror with me going down the road. Amen. <laughs> now, I didn't do that, but, now, but I fell into sin. Amen. I've had bad moments. Any y'all ever had bad moments? Oh, yeah. You got out and did something you shouldn't have done, saw something you shouldn't have saw. Now there's a difference. If I'm planning to go do so, uh, that's willful sin. Yeah. And I'm not preaching to you. You need to get your heart right with God. Amen. But now I'm talking life has happened. Amen. You didn't seek out to have this happen or seek out to have that happen and then sin happens and the next thing you know, have you ever noticed that when sin happens you try to control it and then it keeps growing? Amen. And the next thing you know you're thinking to yourself, how in the world? If I've heard this once over the last seven years, I'm not kidding you, I've heard it almost 10,000 times. I don't know how it got out of hand like this. Amen. So we have to understand that if we say we have no sin, the truth is not even this. Watch this now, verse 9. Talk about cleansing. Talk about the purifying of the soul. If we confess our sins, this isn't for lost people. Amen. Lost people are nothing but sin. That's right. Amen. When I got saved, Brother Frank, I couldn't confess my sins. No. Amen. Didn't even know all of them. Amen. All I knew was I was the sin. Amen. And that I was heading to hell. Amen. And I needed a Savior. And thank God He's the mediator between man and God. It's the man Christ Jesus. And He Amen. saved my soul. Amen. 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 This is for saved folk. Amen. If we confess our sins, Amen. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. <laughs> if we say that we've not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Amen. Now, verse chapter 2, verse 1, my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. Amen. Now here's the thing. I would love to look at you and say, don't sin. But if you live more than a week, you have a high probability of finding sin in your life. Amen. You're going to wake up in a bad mood one day. Amen. And your beautiful wife who's sweet and innocent is going to give you the wrong look. And you're going to say the wrong thing. And she's going to go from sweet and innocent to mean. Amen. <laughs> now listen, you say, well, how's that sin? Woe unto them whom the offense comes. Amen. Amen. You caused her to be that way. Yeah, she called you. I know none of you husbands ever wives ever make you upset. <laughs> but if she did. Uh -huh. <laughs> you find yourself in that place. Yep. Amen. You got teenagers. <laughs> My gray hairs are a testament <laughs> to teenagers. <laughs> if you are a teenager. 
And you had parents. Amen. 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 Because you think you're, you know, moving down into adulthood. And we think you're just separated for about five minutes from diapers. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Amen. It ain't always a good kid of mine. And listen, I'm trying to make life of being serious at the same time. If you seriously do not get ownership and own up to your sin and deal with your sin, you're going to walk around a mess all the time. Amen. You're going to be double-minded man all the time. Amen. Find instability in your life. So I'd like to tell you to sin not. And you're going to have days if you're saved. But watch this. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Amen. Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. And he is the propitiation for our sin. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Amen. I messed up, Brother Hargis. Amen. Maybe you're messed up tonight. And right now you're messed up in your place and you think, Brother Hart, there ain't no way God would take me like I am and fix me like I am. But friend, you listen to me. Oh, yeah. I just gave you enough Bible that if you'll own up to your sin, yes. if you'll take ownership of what you've done and come and give it to Him at the altar, guess what? He will not cleanse you of some of it. He will cleanse you of all of it. Amen. And how can someone get clean with confession Old time Holy Ghost repentance. I'm talking about really turning from your sin, finding victory from your sin, and walking a purified life. How and listen to me. Ugh, the irritation to know that God's gift of cleansing is so simplistic. And already some of you are trying to rationalize in your head how you need to clean yourself up first before you come to the altar. Amen. Amen. No. You couldn't do that to get saved and you can't get that to get cleansed. Amen. You need to come and be honest and let Him do the cleansing yes. of your soul. Amen. Let Him do the purifying of your soul. And how can one stay in such a condition? I will tell you that once one finds repentance and one finds themselves in confessions, they can then keep a continually washing of a purifying water that they once received that salvation and can spring up into eternal life. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. And this will help you from getting dirty all the time. Amen. Verse... 26. Verse 26. I'm trying to figure out why my phone's up here. Lord mercy, I'm losing my mind. I was like, how did they get there? There's that bear. Verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Do you know what it is? I see I do this. I assume that you know what it is. Look back at verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. Every woman said, Amen. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself forth. Now, verse 26, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Amen. See, once you own up to your sin, uh, once you get to a place of confessing your sin, when you come to a true place of repentance, the way to stay in such a state is to be rooted. In your Bible. Amen. Amen. The washing and purifying of this word. If anybody takes this Bible and truly reads it, they won't need a bath, a spiritual bath, look, you know, figuratively every week. They'll have a spiritual bath daily and they'll find themselves walking clean. Amen. They'll find themselves walking right. You won't feel like you're the only one in here. May I address this to everyone in here? You're not the only one that sins. Amen. Amen. 
But you know what? I'm worried about the day we live in. Yeah. Amen. I'm not going to go back here for the sake of time, but Peter said this, we're the holy priesthood. Yeah. That's right. The Bible tells us that we are supposed to become weak between the porch and the altar as the priesthood. But also, Peter said that, listen, we lay up no more physical sacrifice, but spiritual sacrifice. Amen. Amen. You know what I'm bothered by? I'm bothered by a lack of spiritual movement. Amen. Amen. You, that's, just a, that's just a little old space up there. That don't mean nothing. Friend, this is the altar of our Amen. church. Amen. Amen. And it ain't tall enough, and it ain't wide enough, and it ain't padded enough. But I'll tell you this truth to God. If you're really being honest with God, you don't care what it feels like. Amen. 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 You just want to be down there so bad. If you really are wanting to cleanse and if you're saved and you're really wanting to walk close to the Lord, you won't care which corner you get or where you get your spot or whether somebody else. I, that bothers me. The Baptists get too much of that. That's my spot. Hey, the altar's good in any area you yeah, get. Yeah, amen. amen. That's right. And to lay down your spiritual sacrifice tonight. So friend, I'm going to ask you. I wonder tonight if there's anybody that has the filth of this world on them. I wonder if there's anybody that has really backslidden on the Lord in here. Now you listen to this preacher. One step back is backslidden. That's right. One step back is backslidden. Yep. One place from where you should be at with God is the wrong place. Amen. If that's you tonight, you listen to this preacher. It's better for you to never know righteousness than to do what you're doing. Amen. It really is. There's some of you that you're seeing, you have excused it in your mind so much, and you believe that your sin ain't that big, and you believe what you're doing ain't that bad, but then I'm going to tell you, you have a thrice holy God that says otherwise. Amen. 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 And I'm wondering, I'm going to wish you kill that thing. 